Hello, this is Annette with Project Refine Life. Welcome to my channel. Today, I am here to introduce you to the Glowwood Oracle Deck by Lisa Baltalska. This deck was sent to me by the creator. Now, before I accepted the deck, I did take a look at the information, the description, the cards, because I wanted to make sure that it would be something that I would actually be interested in. I don't want to accept things that are not going to feel right within my collection. So if it's not something I would buy myself, I don't want it to be sent to me. Just as simple as that. Now this deck, the reason that I accepted it is because of the basis, the nature of the deck. She describes it as an oracle card deck rooted in ecology, written in nature's language. This is all about plants and insects and fungi and minerals and all of the little creatures, all of everything that you see in the forest and in nature that make up that environment with the idea that one thing needs the other in order to survive. We are all interconnected. I loved the concept of the deck. Just that idea alone, that everything is dependent on the other and nothing is more important than the other. She also stated this, which was really one of the things that really, you know, intrigued me a little bit more. She said, you will find all the tools and knowledge necessary to peel back the veil of the ordinary and find the shining threads of the forest universal truths. I love hiking. I love being in nature. I love being amongst the trees. And I think we just go through life so quickly. You know, everything's fast, everything's quick. I've talked about this before. And we don't really take into consideration everything that is connected in order for us to be where or how we're at. So this deck, I know I'm kind of going off the deep end here, but this deck really did intrigue me. And then looking at the cards and <laughs> the colors and everything else, yep, I said, go ahead and send it. I'll take it. Okay, let's get into this. So as you can see, it comes in this really hefty box. And I'm gonna try not to make this walkthrough or introduction to this deck long because I could spend a really long time on this, but I'm gonna try to keep it short. So it comes in this really hefty box, really well made, along with this linen bag, which is perfect because that's where I'm gonna store this deck. Now it states on the box that it's 275 pages for the guidebook, but it's actually 275. <laughs> Just to be uh, technical here, there is 275 pages of this guidebook. It is a very detailed guidebook it has a total of 11 spreads that are very unique to this deck. I've never seen spreads quite like this, the way that they're described. It also has one which I really liked, which is kind of like the will of the year, but there's one for the Northern Hemisphere and then one for the Southern Hemisphere. Very cool. And then she has this other little one card reading, which is um, forest gardening, and then pruning, which is, they're really cool. I don't want to like give it all away, <laughs> but they're really cool. I really do like them. So each card has a one to two page description with layers and opportunities for deeper readings. And I'll get a little bit more into that after we go through the flip through of the cards. Now the box itself is really nice. As you can see, I'm pushing on this. It's not giving because there's styrofoam in here. So, you know, you get these boxes and they just are crushed or tearing because there's nothing to support them. This is very well supported. So if you have the room to have this box on display and put it up on your shelf, then it's a beautiful box to do that with. I don't have the space for that. So I'll be housing it in this little linen box or bag rather, and um, just storing the box. Okay, let's get into the cards. The cards themselves are really, really gorgeous. I really love the backs. 
and the cardstock. I don't know how to describe cardstock. This is <laughs> this is not a secret if you've been watching my channel. It is a hefty cardstock. It is pliable though. It is edged in black and the muted color tones. Oh my goodness. I just I really love the muted color tones within this deck. It's a matte finish and it's scratch resistant, which is really nice. And as you can see, the cards are out of order because I've been working with the deck for the last couple of weeks. And I was not about to put a 78 card deck back in order. <laughs> so you're gonna see the cards um, as they come through because I did not, like I said, I was not about to put 78 cards back in order. Now, as far as shuffling the cards, now I overhand shuffle. So for me, it is not a problem. If you are a riffle shuffler, you're probably going to have to divide the deck in order to um, shuffle them because they are pretty thick. I don't know, maybe they'll give in time. I don't know, but for the most part, you've seen me riffle shuffle and you don't want me doing that to my decks because it's just, that's just not pretty. <laughs> so let's go ahead and have a full flip through of the deck. So now my overall feelings, I have to be honest, when I first received it, even though I looked it over, I looked at her descriptions, I looked at the deck, when I got it in, it took me a minute <laughs> or more than a minute, to be honest. I had to work with this a little bit because I didn't understand the depth and complexity of the deck. It is so unlike many of the other decks that we are accustomed to seeing. This particular deck 
comes with so many layers and the availability to go deeper into the deck. And the thing about it is that it gives you the opportunity to decide how deep you want to go with the deck, which I find so refreshing. I really do enjoy that about the deck. So first of all, let's look at the table of contents within the deck. So you have a letter from Lisa, philosophy, what's in the Glowwood card, and that is an extremely important piece of this. Reading with the Glowwood spreads card descriptions, categories, symbols, timelines, contact, card index, and symbol index. So as you can see, here is the letter, here's the philosophy, but this right here on page 19, what's in the Glowwood card? This is a very important part of this deck. Now, as you can see all around the edge of the card, there is this little border, but these are not just cute little pictures. These are symbology within the deck that leads you to your deeper level of understanding and reading. As you can see, you have symbology here, all along the side. All of these mean something, but you can go and just pull this card and just do a very simple reading. So similar to your little white book that you receive with most Oracle decks and most tarot decks, it does have a way for you to just go to the keywords and get a quick description of the card. So if you just want to do a quick reading, you go here, you're done. If you want to take it further, there's another level. If you want to take it even further than that, then there's another level. I really like how smart this deck is and it gives you the opportunity to take those layers or not. So she states here, glow wood is modular. Its parts are designed to be used one by one all together in combinations or however you wish. It's smart. I'm telling you guys, the deck is smart. I do really like the deck. I love the nature scenes and the, just the thought of everybody working together and the fact that you can work with it on its own or in combination with all these other levels is just fantastic. So level one is to find the reading provided in the card description, which I already showed you. Level two is the categories, which is right here. So you have card descriptions, which is your level one. And then you have the categories, which is your level two where it gets a little bit more descriptive and how you would um, dig a little bit more. And then level three, which are the symbols, which are all around the sides of the cards. It does not need to be a complicated system. And the idea of mastering a deck, like getting to know the deck, isn't really part of this system. It's really not. It is really designed to keep you intrigued and learning more, which I think is just fantastic. So to get you more familiar with the deck and the way that it works, I chose a card, which is the Stinging Nettle. And Stinging Nettle, I have a funny story about, you know, I like to include funny stories. So we used to do a lot of hiking when our girls were younger and we were out on a trail and I pointed to Stinging Nettle that was on the trail and I stated, to my family, don't touch the stinging nettle because it stings, hence the name stinging nettle. So don't touch it because it gets into your fingers and it's really difficult to get out and it stings for a while. So as soon as I said that, my husband and my youngest daughter bent down and of course grabbed the stinging nettle <laughs> after I had just told them, don't touch it. And what did they do? They touched it. So anywho, that's my little funny story about the stinging nettle. So let me show you how this works. You go to the back in card index and you look for stinging nettle and you find stinging nettle on page 176. You come to page 176 
and it gives you a breakdown of the plant. The Latin name, the plant, the symbols, associations, description, and keywords. So your keywords here, that's like your little white book descriptions. Your description area is where you get into more detail of how this plant plays into the ecosystem and the personality of the plant. The association is how it works within the ecosystem. And these symbols right here, these are all along the edge of the card. These borders are on purpose. Each symbol means something. So that's where you become more in depth with your reading. This is where you get more layers within your reading. It really is a smart deck. I really do enjoy it now that I've got to know it. So right here you have one thing and, um, and another and in the back, in your level three readings, that's where you have your symbols. Now, if you want a quick guide for your symbols, she does include a little PDF, which gives you a quick little breakdown of the icons for the symbols. So you can quickly revert back to, let's say community, 214. Like I said, there are different levels within the card you can make it as in-depth as you want or as surface level as you want. If you want a quick reading, you just read that little white book type of interpretation or you take it further. So it just depends on how much time you have. So here for keywords, we have old haunts, fertility, a site of a previous or current community always showing up of two attitudes, the helpful and the not so helpful, a wide range of benefits in disguise, bad first impressions, and generosity. Now, if you know anything about stinging nettle, it has so many uses. It is such a fantastic plant. You can use it in teas and in all other types of ways, but to touch it, once you touch the stinging nettle, you know, it's gonna hurt you. So it does have that duality within the plant. And I like her description for it. She says, some good things come with a sting. Underneath the sharp exterior, which one can learn to handle right, there's a wealth of companionship, assistance, attractiveness, sustenance, and yes, friendliness even. Some might find that nettle more irritating than others, but like it or not, if there are resources, people, or nice refreshments, you can count on it to be there and to usher in some fresh blood and energy as well. Let the haters hate. The party's livelier when Nettle joins in, which it will do, and more likely than not, and especially if it feels it isn't welcome. What a great description of Stinging Nettle. I really do like this deck, and I could get into all the little details on the outside. You know what, I'll just touch on this one right here. So, community. This little symbol means community. So then we go to page 214. And community states, webs in a circle, a group of common interests, not necessarily of similar beings, else a group with different interests that are mutually compatible or interrelated like a social symbol, but long-term more invested, like the partnership symbol, but with multiple partners in the spirit of collective a web of exchange. I'm not going to keep going on, but anywho, you get the idea of how you can continue to take this reading further and further. It's a smart deck, and I don't think that it's a deck that you're going to easily outgrow. You can take it in steps, which I think is fantastic. Now, I always like to include deck pairings. So I brought out a few. So this is the Future Ancestors Tarot. And let me just bring it out so you can see them together. The backs go lovely together. And of course you have these type of interactions. You know what, that's not gonna work. Let me try this. Let me try this, see? Still learning here, here we go. So as you can see, these two, the colors are just so nice. They're muted. 
and they go along nicely with each other. And I love the way that these two play off each other because you have this knowledge of your future self, your future ancestors, and the knowledge of plants and trees and insects. It, they really work well together. So it is this interconnectedness of people and the land, and I really like the way that that works out together. Now, the next deck that I'm going to share with you is the Johannes Jaus Tarot. This is the sixth edition. And again, I like the way that they play off each other as far as the backs are concerned, but also just the way that the tones work with each other and the overall reading with one another. I have these upside down, so let me go ahead and place them the right way. But again, you do have some flora um, within this deck, and then you have people, and again, the interconnectedness of working together. I just, I like the way that they work together. Okay, our next deck. For a really heavy and grounded reading, I really like the Dust to Onyx along with this deck. Again, I'll show you the backs together, but just the way that they read together, the colors really, really works well with one another. They're smart together. Oh, here, see, and I'm flipping these upside down. You can't see them if I flip them the opposite way. <laughs> I'm getting better, guys. I'm getting better, one video at a time. Okay. So now the next deck that I think pairs nicely with it, and I, it's not just about the colors, it really is about the, about the way that they read together. This deck, as I said, you can go really deep into, and um, for that reason, I like the Hush Tarot with it. And the Hush Tarot, for me, has been another deck that I've really had to take slow in getting to know, and it can go really deep, <laughs> really deep. So I really do like the way that these play off one another and just the feeling that they give, the symbology within the deck, the colors. Um, they read well together. I do like them together. So there's just a few options for deck pairings, which, like I say, are that's it's very important to me. So I always like to include deck pairings in my walkthroughs. I am looking forward to just digging further into this deck. Now, one of the things that she does say about this deck, and I do want you to keep this in mind also, is that she states that it's really not a deck that you want to master. And I like the idea of that. I like that it's open to me continuing to learn more and more about the deck. I don't want to master anything. I'm serious. I don't want to master anything. I always want to be on that scope of learning and being more familiar with, with everything. I want to be curious. I want to stay curious. I want to keep learning. Once I've mastered it, I've stopped learning. And I think that's why we get so extremely bored with some of the decks out there, because once you've mastered it, where's the fun, right? Where's, and it's not about fun. I say, I always say, where's the fun? But it's, where's the depth? Where's the depth in that? I, I don't, you know, at that point, I've come to the end of the road and I'm done. I like how smart this deck is. I like what she's done here. That's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching my review. I really do appreciate the deck being sent out and I appreciate you watching. If you have any questions about the deck, please feel free to reach out. Again, thank you for watching. I appreciate you so much. Have a beautiful day and I will see you later.